Okay, um, how's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Joe. Uh, I'm just making this video basically to give an account and explain to you guys um, what exactly I experienced. Um, you know, and that, that's pretty much it. So on March 22nd, 2017, um, I went to sleep late that night. And uh, when I went to sleep, um, I had I ended up, uh, my, my, my soul, my spirit ended up yeah, basically in this room um, with uh, this dark room. There was two individuals in a room. Um, it, I, I don't believe that they were people. It just seemed like they were kind of talking about something like about God, but they weren't talking about him. I couldn't really remember what they were talking about. And one of them had pulled out a joint, basically, like he was like about to smoke a joint. I remember knocking out the joint out, out of his hand. But for me to do that, I had to get up from the position I was laid in because I was laid vertically on, on like my couch. But in the same place, in this place where I was, I was also laid the same exact way. And as I knocked it out of his hand, I fell over. When I fell over, um, I literally ended up in this place. And this place was just a place of outer darkness. It was complete darkness. It was nothing but darkness. I couldn't see anything in front of me. I couldn't see my hands in front of me. I couldn't see uh, uh, or even feel like as if I had uh, um, uh, any kind of knowledge of where I was or the place I was in. And I was like even trying to pull my hands in front of me and I couldn't see. I couldn't see my hands in front of me. And as I'm trying to figure out what's going on, because, you know, even... In, in, in this world, like when you're trying to look through something, you, you give it a moment expecting for like, you know, your vision to adjust and for you to see more clearly, like if it's in the dark or whatever. And so I'm waiting to see for it to adjust and to see more clearly. And it, it just, it remained complete darkness, complete darkness. And I'm talking about thick darkness and like maybe within a minute or so of, of being there, uh, like a, a, a small light began to, to uh, dim a little bit behind me as if it was something, I don't know if the light was from me or if it was a small light behind me um, that was allowed me to see where, began to open up and allow me to see where I was and what I was seeing. And the thing that I was seeing was the most horrifying, terrifying thing that anybody could ever, ever, ever account for in this world. And what I mean by that is what I had seen was literally a sea of people. And the, the people were just in silhouettes. So it, it seemed as if though this was a place where those who had just died are now coming up from. And you're now seeing the the, the sea of people who are all coming up and who have, who have either passed or they died or they're here for the most part. These are people that are here and there's no physical descriptions of them. There's no physical descriptions of them. They're just uh, literally uh, silhouettes. Like it's almost like they're—they're. They're, I can only see their the shadow image of them, and they're—they're they're in front of me and they're around me. And you're talking about trillions of people, trillions of people. As far as my eyes can see, if you ever attended a concert or any public gathering, or even looked at through TV, and you've seen. Uh, large amounts of people all in one place or in a place where as you look ahead you see like a large crowd you can still pretty much see past people you can see a landscape still this place was so it was so many people that the landscape was people as far as my eyes can see there were people as far to, to my left and to my right as far as I can see I'm seeing people I'm seeing people and everybody is there is no interaction amongst us nobody's interacting with anybody and you the, the only the immediately the fear that was that was there it was like it was controlling the environment you know uh, it, it was like at that moment I had nothing but but questions I was trying to figure out where I was why am I here wow first of all why this this the appearance and the setting was so scary in itself that I'm trying to figure out what is this what's going am I in a dream like what's going on what's happening and as soon as I I begin to try to figure out what's going on and I'm, I'm and right now I'm at a, a like from this moment on I'm at a very 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 high high level of fear and it remained that way the entire time and it wasn't because nothing actually about the experience made it scary uh fear was literally uh just a part of my being. I, I, I could not be nothing but absolutely scared. And I'm talking about scared or fear, like to the point where when, when you, when somebody just scares you, you get immediately scared. You may burst out, you may yell or something because you're scared and then it begins to come down. But I'm talking about fear that stays at that level as if somebody had just, you, you just got caught at the highest point of how scared you were, or what, what fear you had. And that's all that you have the entire time. It doesn't come down. So you're like, feel like as if you, you basically shouldn't be able to breathe or 
you know, be normal or even handle yourself to assess anything or to have, use your, your cognitive uh, skills or anything like that because you, you're, you're literally in this much fear. You're still able to just be in this much fear and not know what's going on. And so literally, I would say like maybe a f I, there's no time. So I can't say what moments of time. I know that at, from there, I then had I, I then had been moved to uh, uh, these what appeared to be these caves. And so I had moved not walked but it was like a moving thing like a force had brought me over to these caves as if this is where these caves where i was supposed to go and belong and I, and then now it had gotten dark again to where i couldn't really see so i'm trying to navigate through caves and i'm, I'm kind of bumping into these fixed boundaries and i don't know what it is where it was um but i'm just okay i would either go right or i would either go left i would either turn left or then i would turn right and i'm trying to find my way through and i couldn't find my way through until i eventually got to this one place where the it was a cave it was a cave uh um and it descriptively just like a cave but it it, it was somewhat uh, um put into like a a, a, a I would say it's a club setting, but I, I didn't see any bars. I'm not seeing any drinking. I don't see anything like that. I just see people seem to be uh, 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 dancing without any music at all. No music at all. I'm not hearing any music at all, but people are almost like slow dancing as if they're just bopping their head to a tune, but there's no music playing at all. And as I'm trying to, to you know, really look upon what's going on and who are these people that I'm looking at, like what's going on? Why? Because I'm still remembering, I'm still at the same height of fear. So I'm still trying to figure out how can anybody be literally enjoying this, their dance or whatever they're doing at, in this kind of environment, like in this environment. And so I look over and then I see this young, uh, 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 this is the only, this appeared to be the only being that was there that somewhat seemed like he recognized me. Everyone else seemed like there was a controlled force as to their bop or their slow motion, you know, two step or whatever it was. I'm, I look, he's looking at me as he's looking at me, he has on these dark shades and I'm trying to figure out as I'm thinking, as I was thinking to myself, like I'm trying to figure out what exactly, uh, is, is like going on with him. Um, I, I, cause I'm thinking in my mind, obviously, again, I want to make it clear that like when I was there, when, uh, what my thoughts, my thoughts were just as communicative as, as if, as like, as if you would speak. So as I was thinking, as I would think, um, is how I would be able to move too. So it, it was like, as I would think to oh, go, I want to go over here to go to this part. Well, I'm, Cause I'm trying to get out the cave before I had gotten to that place. I want to make a left here. I want to go here as I would think it, boom, I would automatically just go to that place, that particular place. And it wasn't a walk. It was like a, a, a force. It was simultaneous as I thought, then boom, you know, it would happen. And I got, when I got, so when I, again, so now back at this cave and I'm looking at this dude and they're like, he's like two stepping back and forth. I, that's when I started to realize that he wasn't enjoying himself, that he was actually in torment, but it seemed like to be like his torment was something that he was going through within himself, but I could not see. So even his, his gaze upon me was a, a cry of, of help, but there's no communication. You understand what I'm saying? So I can, he's not necessarily, he's not saying, help me, help me, help me, help me, or he's not uh, uh, able to even show me that he's suffering. It's almost like I knew it. Because of the even the look that he was looking upon me with, that even as I'm looking, and but we but the, we can't the, the slightest bit of interaction is not happening. We can't interact at all whatsoever, and so I'm like, oh my god! I'm like, I, and I'm I guess I'm even more scared now. And I'm like, what am I doing in this place? And it was at that moment that I, I had thought, and and it came to me that I was like, am I dead? Am I in hell? And I couldn't. That's all that was boggling over my mind like oh my god i think i died what happened how did i get here what am i doing here was the next question it was like what am i doing here how did i get here did i die what's going on what's going on is literally the only thought of what i have about this present time and and even as i was even thinking that i'm like what's going on i remember uh at that time i didn't even think of like you know the lord or you know my personal faith and, and my belief in jesus christ i i I was at this point. I was still pretty much being tormented by my own fear of where I was and if uh, uh, this is where I, I belong. And and then it, then the next thought was like, but I'm. A, I thought that I was. I'm a Christian. Like, what am I doing here? I'm a Christian. I'm. I didn't understand why would I be here if I'm a Christian? What am I doing here if I'm a Christian? What what is this? My judgment is this? Is this where I'm supposed to be? I'm. I was. It's more than confusion because when you say confusion, when I think, speak of it, it almost uh, in, in our realm, it makes it seem like as if you're, you're able to, 
you're able to think this way and have these kind of thoughts without uh, necessarily um, feeling the effects of everything else. But the other feelings and everything else, the fear and everything else never left. So I still had that. So it's almost like as if everything, it's almost like, you know, when people say that their life uh, 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 flashed before their eyes or that things had happened so badly that in that moment, they, as something bad was about to happen, time has slowed down for them, even though something bad was happening at the same time. Somewhat similar to that, but to 100 degrees more, 100 degrees more. You're able to still feel exactly the fear that you felt and still have a bunch of this knowledge about where you are and what, because I, the, the funny thing is with that, I asked myself, I said, what am I, am I in hell? Even though in my, even in my own knowledge, I knew I was in hell, but I don't know why I'm even still asking myself, why am I in hell? Why am I here? But I knew I was in hell. I had the knowledge that I was in hell. I had the knowledge that these everyone here is in hell. Everybody here is in hell. And so I'm like, what's going on? I'm still, but so all this is still happening simultaneously, and I'm still scared. The the amount of fear there is like, how am I able to feel this this feeling this intense? If even thinking that if this was a dream, how am I able to feel it this intense? And I've never felt these my senses to be heightened at this level in a dream. There's so so I, that's why the thoughts of being dead was the only thing that I could think of. How did I die? Did I die? And what am I doing here? So anyway, I'm looking upon him and this guy is literally in torment. I I was already frantically in fear and at a high level. It but when when I seen that upon him and it was dawning on me that I was in uh, that I already knew it, but it was dawning on me that I was in hell, it caused me to you know even be more frantic. So I I, I immediately I'm looking for an exit. Where's the next place I can get out of? I think, you know, to go over here, I go towards the end of the room because I almost don't even want any of them to really even see me here. I don't even feel like I belong here. I'm trying to get out. And so in my attempt to try to get out, I go towards the other corner of the room. As I'm going to the other corner side of the cave, uh, as I go to the other side of the cave, I can't see anything. So I'm still trying to figure out what way am I going and not going. And uh, and then even out of a form of desperation, I uh, uh, I try to like basically escape to see if there's a way I can go up. If I can go upward, like is there a way I can go get up out to go up? Is there is there even a up? And I don't even remember even able, being able to look up because remember I you don't uh, as you think it so is it is it happening? So even as I'm saying can I uh, I want to go up or can I go up? Simultaneously, I'm already trying to go up, and I realized that I was at the, the the ceiling of this place, but it was a fixed boundary, and I couldn't feel what the boundary was. All I knew was that from the, the point of the ceiling of feeling this fixed boundary, I felt immense heat. The amount of heat that I felt on top of me, the immense heat that I felt on top of me was so scary. I can't, I'm trying to explain it to you guys, and you have to understand that, like, for me to even do this, if people know me, for me to even do this is, uh, uh, more than, um, uh, if, if you know my character, is more than enough to at least let people know that like th- this is this is serious for me to get to this level to explain it to talk about it at this level uh, because it's, I, I'm I'm somebody that I'm not really that open to just letting everybody into my life and you know and and be open with my life wh- whether it's on social media or whatever it is anything in this life I'm not just open like that I'm, I'm more of a secretive person and so as I'm hitting the ceiling and I'm feeling this immense heat. I, Right then and there, I was like, oh, my God, I'm in hell. I couldn't even believe that I'm in hell and that there's now I can actually feel the heat that is above me. The heat was so intense, even from what was above me, that I'm not seeing any physical flames. But this heat felt like as if even now, if I press my way forward, that it, it, it was enough for me to say, I don't even want to go up because I, I knew that this this fire would consume me because the, the heat felt like real life. It felt like I was like real life heat. It still felt like the heat that you would feel here. As if you put your hand over a stove, you would feel the heat. Like you would literally feel the heat. You would feel the, the intense heat. And it was and it was even hotter than what you would consider to be a stove. So even as I going up, it's like, ah, and I'm coming back down, like, oh my God, this where's all that, that heat coming from? This why is there this much heat on the on top of me? And so I'm I'm just frantically trying to figure out where I was, what's going on. And I remember trying to say, at that point, I was like, when it had said in that I'm in hell, the only thing I could think of was to be calling out Jesus' name. I'm calling out Jesus' name. And nothing is happening. I'm saying, Jesus, 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 what's going on? Jesus, Jesus. And as I'm saying, Jesus, 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 nothing is happening. And then uh, uh, I begin to hear, I heard an audible voice explaining to me that this is how it is down here. And that... uh, 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 
uh, it's not what you think that it's actually Mary down here and that, you know, these people were enjoying themselves, the people that I had seen that were in the club. And I, again, I didn't really know who this audible voice was, or what I, but I understood what he was saying. I understood what was, what was trying to be told to me uh, because, again, there was no physical thing in front of me. There was I'm not talking to I wasn't seeing a spiritual being. It was the he was able to communicate with me by his own through my thought in my own head. To, to talk to me somewhat in the same way that we have voices here in our own heads now, here as we're on earth. And so he's telling me that the, uh, this it's Mary down here, that I should have no fear to want to come down here and that I could basically, I could uh, uh, do as I want, I could live as I want, and I could be here and I would be Mary. It would be Mary. It wouldn't be an issue. There wouldn't be a problem. And even as he's saying this, as so when he got towards the point where he's basically trying to convince me, convince me in my mind and my spirit, and I'm, I'm thinking I'm like, yo, I'm like, nah, this isn't true. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm thinking like this. I'm horrified. What are you? I'm horrified. No way. What are you? No way am I coming here. No way will I be here. Like, without a doubt, there's no way. There's no way for anybody that I would come here. I would be here. I would even want to be here. I would even consider it. And so I'm thinking, I'm, and this is after me saying, Jesus, I'm like, what's what's going on? And then I remember when I when I was saying that, I, I just went back to reverting to saying, Jesus, like, give me a Jesus, Jesus, like, what's going on? Why is, you know, I'm, I'm saying your name, like, Jesus, what's going on? And as I'm saying his name, that audible voice then got louder. And, the, and now he was, the audible voice now was yelling at me. And what appeared in front of me seemed to be like uh, an eye. It was an eye. It was a large eye. It was a large eye. And I remember the eye, the eye was like not like not any eye we've ever seen on this earth. It was an eye that even appeared to have different arrays of colors in, in like in the pupil. It was a different kind of eye. And it was I knew that then this voice was the this eye was what the voice was that I was hearing because as he now was yelling, he he, he said to me, uh, uh, you dare use that name down here. You dare use that name as I've as I've already been showing you everything down here. You dare use that name. But this was like I don't, it's hard to explain it. I'm, it, so, it sounds like I'm saying it as if he said it that proper. And like so, to think you have to understand that even as as proper as just saying that you dare use that name, that the the voice that he used in saying it was a roaring, yelling, a very intimidating like voice. It was like a you dare use that, you dare use that name, and it was, so some some similar like that, but heightened. I'm not doing a good job of of you know saying it the same exact way but it was basically furious infuriated that i even was saying jesus as i was down there and um uh from what i was saying and he was like you dare use that name you dare use that and he began cursing at me like so it was like cursing at me at the same time like you dare use that name blah, blah, blah. and i'm and so even now i even i should by seeing the eye alone, I was so frantically scared already. And, and the only thing in my mind was, this is Lucifer. This is the devil. This is Lucifer here yelling at me in, in, in the form of an eye, though. Just the form of an eye. I'm like, but so it seemed like as if he, he wasn't, his, uh, 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 his presence is somewhat throughout the, throughout all hell, but obviously he can manifest himself as he wishes, as he pleases. So I'm, I'm like, Yo, what's going? I'm like, Jesus. I'm even more scared. I'm saying, Jesus, Jesus, even more now. Jesus, 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 even more now. Like, oh my God, this is Lucifer. And it was in that moment that, boom. I that's when I immediately then woke up. So I didn't have any. I didn't, you know, I didn't have any. There was no light. There was no bright shining light that came and got me. I didn't. Jesus did not appear to me. None, none of those things happened. All all I experienced is what exactly what I told you. And I, you know, I woke up in such fear. Even as I woke up, I I, I felt I felt like I can still feel the heat. On the top of my head, the heat from the uh, being above, whether that was the lake of fire on top of me, I don't know, but I can still feel the heat. So I'm, I woke up and I'm still pretty much like, ah, oh, ah, oh, like I'm still, I still felt the same terror that I was under uh, when I was there. Now, mind you, everybody may have scary dreams. And if you have a scary dream or something, you wake up and you're still, you, you, your level of fear is still pretty much. Uh, um, similar to what you you feel when somebody scares you, it's it's high for that moment, a couple seconds, and it goes back down, right? So, but even for me, even at, even now, my coming back into into waking up, when the the terror, the terror and the 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 feeling of the heat, and then the terror that I had wasn't even going away. Meaning that it wasn't at the same high level, but as it was going away, it was going away at a slower pace. You understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Like it was 
a lot less slower as in as how if somebody scared me i would quickly come down and be like okay yeah well, that was you i'm not funny whatever this was a different this was entirely different this was i can i could almost still feel even it's two days now it's been two days and i could almost still feel the terror of being there and and it's hard to describe that because when you say terror people here with our senses we only equate terror to maybe what we see right maybe we see something that makes us terrified or you're in a movie something is going on that is it's ter terror is a, a sense that is uh, uh, induced and it can raise or be high or whatever. I was still feeling the terror of it being at a high level and not going away. And it was coming down slowly. And I was, I was still frantic. I was scared. I, I was still feeling the heat. I you know, immediately came. I ran over to my, uh, uh, to my wife. And I, was, I had to wake up and tell her, like, yo, I just had the worst, the worst nightmare or whatever. I had the worst nightmare. I don't, I, I mean, I'm still kind of uh, um, disoriented because I'm not really sure if I'm really out. Because being there and... Being there and understanding the concept of eternity that I couldn't get out. And that's another thing that I want to touch on. Um, because remember, again, the reason why it seems like I'm, I'm describing this stuff out of sequence is because it's all happening simultaneously. So remember I said that I had the knowledge. So even though I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, saying, oh, I'm here for eternity, I, I didn't have to say that to myself. Everyone had the knowledge that you could not get out. Or at least I'm going to say I did. I knew and I understood I could not get out. And not only that I couldn't get out, but that I was here forever. I understood that this was a, I am absent of time and this place goes on forever, forever. And I understood that. And, that, and I think that was, that was, it's a, it was a part of the fear. It was a part of the terror that all this stuff that I have knowledge of, instantly I'm, I'm, I'm completely all knowing. I'm all knowing. I know, I know it all. I know it. I know it, even though I'm even questioning all the things that I know to be true. The same way we know I'm, I'm breathing air because oxygen goes to our lungs. I, we know, you know, we know, we learn common things here, the natural laws on this earth. We know it, we just know it because we know it either because it, even if it's not explained to you, you just know it to be that way. So it's the same exact way. I, I just knew that this was, I was here forever. I was stuck here forever. I couldn't get out. And, 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 and what was going on was being controlled. And that was, a, that was the worst part about it. That was the worst part about the entire experience. That was the worst part. The worst part. And the worst part of the, the lack of hopelessness and that nobody can interact with anybody else. Nobody. There's even, there's even comfort in, 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 in being, in, in going under, a, in being in an oppressive state. There's comfort. Good example. I mean, I'm being real. Me being a black person. It's comfort. There's still comfort to feeling like or knowing that you know, your struggle of what you go through to, to overcome, you know, racial disparities or racial discrimination or biases that I, I, I'm enduring it amongst a group. There's a certain level of comfort there and feeling and in everybody's own heart or even or if you're in jail, you even people in jail have a comfort that they're not the only ones in jail. Even if they're in solitude, they understand that there's other people here and that this is something that others are enduring with them. You're not even given simple comforts like that. You don't even feel not. It's not that you don't not don't even care. It's. It's not an element of that realm. You don't even feel a, a, a comfort. Comfort is absent. So there is no, there's, there's no recognition of, oh, this, look at how many people are, we're all going through it. Look at how many people are here. They're, 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 it's impossible. There can't be a party in hell because even though you're, when you're in hell, the only person that, the only person that you, that you believe that is going through something that you can feel and, 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 and feel and, and, and go through is you. The only thing you feel, you can be, even if you're there with millions upon trillions upon trillions of people, you feel as lonely as if you're the only one there. And that's hard to explain. You feel like you're the only one there. That's exactly what it was. Exactly. So there's not, so absent comfort, absent comfort, absent no interaction, everything that appears to be even slightly good is not there at all. So it's, it's horrifying. And mind you, again, like I'm saying, it's not because I had the knowledge of all these things that I was horrified. Horror and terror was a part of the elements, the environment. It was a part of the environment. It was exactly, you could not choose, you could not even choose to be at a different level of fear if you even want to, because you, didn't know, you don't even have the cognitive abilities to, de to decide to yourself that I'm not going to be scared or what's really going on. Let me figure out before I just, you know, act frantic. There is no, the, the cognitive functions that we're, we have here are completely absent. And that's what people need to understand, that there is, there's no controlling of it. A, a, a lot of the things that, the, the very small things that you take for granted, that you have autonomy over, that you have autonomy in mind, you have autonomy in movement, you have autonomy in, in, in what you think and how you think and what happens and what's going to happen. All that stuff is literally, it's good. I now realize it's, it's a good characteristic. It's a good thing that you have autonomy. It's a good thing. So imagine absent anything that's good. Imagine no interaction. 
you family, you can't even consider family. Your family, you're not even considering your family. At this, as, as, as far as you're concerned, you you even understand the, the aspect of that even your 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 familial ties that you consider to be family is somewhat uh, minute. It, it doesn't really exist. Blood relations are just physical, but the spirit is enduring on its own. I, you won't even consider yourself to have brothers and sisters and, and those of loved ones. The only kindred you have is maybe those you have. I, I don't even know how anyone can even have the ability. For me, I didn't have an experience where I was able to have the ability to even think of loved ones. All I can endure and deal with was what was presently controlling me in that environment. And nothing else mattered. Nothing else mattered. Nothing else mattered. And so I, that's why I'm, I'm sharing this because I feel like people need to hear this stuff. And this, I feel like I, I've, I've been the person that I've seen tons of these near-death experience, experiences or at least people with near-death near experiences or have uh, uh, testimonies on their, on the website or on YouTube talking about how they experience hell. And again, it's when somebody is explaining it to you, I already understand that unless this is meant for you to hear it. Unless, if somebody is explaining it to you, it does not do it justice to what it really is and how it really feels. It doesn't. So the the, the greatest impact, unless unless there's really grace and, 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 and God has grace and mercy over your life for you to be able to really understand what somebody is saying or for, for at least for what I'm saying and how I'm explaining it because because physically you're not able to even really touch that deep so it only it would have to be a miracle for God to touch somebody's heart to come to an understanding of of what it is I'm explaining and and so that's why I'm I'm, I'm understand that and so that's why I don't I don't I'm not doing this for people to believe me I'm doing this because of I now I am now fear of my own record I'm in fear of going and ended up in that place I'm in fear of answering up to my life and what I'm doing in my life in every single aspect of it, every part of it, every single aspect of it. I'm in fear. I'm in fear of my own thoughts. I'm in fear. I'm in fear, let alone it, it, cause if it causes me to end up in that place, I'm in fear. And, and even if, even if I'm not supposed to be in fear, I'm, I still feel some of the terror and some of the things. It's, it's only two, it's only been two days. So I'm still pretty much dealing with the, uh, the, 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 the feelings of all of it, you know, and, and, and the memory of it, you know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to share this, man, for, for somebody who, uh, maybe wanted to, uh, stumbled across this video and, and they're undecided and they're not sure. They don't really know, you know, what's going on. And, or if, even if you're, whether you're, you believe in Christ or you don't, um, hell is real. Hell is real. Whether you're an intellect or whether you're a, a, someone who has never attended school in your life, hell is real and hell is is not something that is based on belief. This is not belief. This is not your belief. This isn't what you believe. This isn't everybody has respective rights and what they believe in. This is what is true. This is what, what is really going to happen. What is really going to go on? What is really happening? What is true? What is true? This has nothing to do with belief. I don't care what your belief is. I don't care what your background is. Nobody is going to sway me or, or convince me about my experience to denote it to be any less real than it is than you even trying to explain to me what you're talking about. I don't even consider now, I don't even consider half of what I see here to be real at all. It's all a facade. It's all a mirage. We're all just passing through. And literally, we're all literally, and, and the majority of us are being deceived. And, and, and the devil is deceiving us. And it's all deceptive to make us think that we that we actually uh, uh uh, have these abilities and our autonomy can't be taken away and this stuff can't be taken that this life is really forever listen to me there's no such thing as YOLO or, or, or living for the moment you, you're going to have all the time in the world to live for the moment in terror for the rest for eternity in terror in fear you'll be living for the moment and that's the, because that moment is all you have and nothing else will matter not one not one single thing you do here as in a form of enjoyment will be even remembered to for you to even say that at least you live the life that you live the only thing that you will have to literally to stake claim to this life is why why did i even have a life to end up here in the first place I would have rather not even had a life. I would have rather not even had any pleasurable thing because at least there's still hope that I'm going to get through it. There's still hope that I'm, I'm I, I, I could, there's something better at the end of the road. There's still hope that things can change. The stuff we talk about all the time. What's the, the, the whole premise on wanting to live for the moment is that you only live once. Now imagine what if I told you you only die once too. And then that's it. And then fate is, fate is decided. And if you can't understand eternity now, you will understand it then. 
And it's, and it's not up for discussion. It's not up for debate. I'm not looking for political talk. I'm not looking for schools of thought. I'm not looking for re uh, religious faiths and beliefs in the afterlife. I'm not looking for literature. I'm not looking for any of those things. The word of God is the word of God. The word of God is the word of God. And that's all. And, and, and in that place, all you know, all you will know and understand it is to be true. There's no debate. People are not debating down there. Nobody's debating. Nobody's trying to figure it out. Nobody's trying to debate amongst each other. Even, even, even if you don't believe in him or you're not sure why you chose him, you still don't want to be there. Do you hear what I'm saying? You still don't even want to be there. So I, I, I know that even if you're a devout Satanist and you believe that you follow him and, and, and Satan is in Satanist, you adhere to his principles and you like what, and you believe in what Satan is doing and what the devil is doing and, and, and you like that way of thinking or whatever, whatever reason is why you chose him or, or, or you choose that path. You still won't be the want to be there. You still will not want to be there. You will not want to be, uh, 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 even thinking of, uh, uh, why you chose him. All you're going to want to do is beg for your life to get out of there. Everyone is trying to get out. Everyone is trying to get out and nobody's concerned about the suffrage of anyone else because what you're going through is so heightened. It's such at a high level of what you're dealing with alone that you probably couldn't even remember if you had a mom. You couldn't even remember if you had a, a, a life once before. How many brothers and sisters you have? These things are not even of concern. Who's your loved one? Where's your kids? None of that stuff. None of it matters. None of it. None of it. So I just wanted to man, put that out there and let everybody hear this because I'm if you can, if if you can't see that from my look, my expression, how it's coming from my heart, that I'm not telling the truth, I have no reason to lie. I have no reason to, to do this. Nobody has any reason to just come out and say things just to say things. Neither does any, everybody can give an account for what they want to give an account for. But I know what was real. So for at least for me, my, I want to make sure my record is clean so that you can't say that I didn't say it. So that nobody can, so, so that it's known, that everybody knows that Joe said it, that I said it. I want everybody to know that Joe said it, that I said it. That's how important it is to me not to be there. Yes, I said it. And I'm telling everybody, say what you want to say about me. I don't care. I said it. I said it. And I told you. So my hands are washed because I told you. I told you because I, I'm, I'm now going to be accountable for how I'm going to live my life from this day forth. So, and that's, you know, that's the, the, the most honest I can be with people. If I love you, then that's the most honest thing that I can do. And I could tell you, you can, you can write it off. You know, more, more than half of people maybe can write it off and live your life here. You can continue to live your life here. But like I said, it's everybody going to have their day and that's not going to stop. That's the one thing that nobody can overrule or overrun. So as, as long as you have your day, you're going to have your date, your date. When they say the day you were born, now here comes the experience of the day that you die. You can't say that you didn't hear it. At least not for me. You can't say it. Because in this, this, this also will at least be my eternal proof of record of me letting people know that this was real, that hell is real. Hell is real. There's no such thing as come close, coming close as Christians. If you even debate in your mind, if you got to even review your record to figure out whether or not you're going, you're already probably on the wrong side. Because I'm telling you right now, it needs, the decision is unanimous. We're not looking for a majority vote. There's no board in heaven. There's not a majority vote as to who's going and whether you're going or not. There's no politicking. It's unanimous. Either the Lord knows you or he doesn't. Either you have a relationship with him or you don't. And what I mean by relationship, I'm not talking about past relationship. Now. Now. Right now. You could even know God. You could have prayed to him and he answered your prayers. And that was your proof as to why you, you attained to this faith that you believe that, that, that you believe in God. Or you've told people, other people about Jesus because of little experiences you had, whether you prayed or you were healed before, or, um, um, you've always had a feeling. Maybe you've even had his presence with you before, or, or you've even, you're even more of an active believer. You know, you've had a, a, an ongoing relationship with him throughout your entire life. Maybe you grew up in a church, whatever it is. If you do not have the spirit of the Lord in you, in you, free from indwelling sin, free from, you hear what I said, free from indwelling sin. At the moment that he comes, with the moment that you die, you'll find yourself in hell. And you'll be thinking to yourself that how I'm a Christian. You wouldn't even understand. You wouldn't even understand what you're doing there. You won't understand. 
to me, that's too much of Russian roulette for me. That's too much. I'm not looking to come close. I'm not looking like, I'm not trying to just get in. Because now that I realize there's no such thing. You can't think with your carnal mind. There's no such thing as just now getting in. You're not going to just make it in. There's no such thing. There's no review of the evidence. You're in or you're out. Either his blood is on you or you're not. Either his spirit is in you or you're not. Because there, there's, it's not merit-based. It's not based on what works you do, what, what, what good things you perform. That's what I mean. It's carnal. Because even as a, a as somebody you think you're a Christian, you ain't gotta you ain't gotta believe in all that spiritual stuff. You ain't gotta you just believe that if you you know you're a good person that you're gonna make it. There's no review. Do you get what I'm saying? At death comes determination. At death comes judgment. And there's no there's no appeal. I don't even know if you'll even have time to their disagreement. Like I said, when I was there, everybody there was, everybody, everybody, it seemed zombie-like because everybody literally could not do anything about it at all. So it's like, so what you think and believe means nothing. You have no power. What you think and believe means nothing. You have no power. So you better tap into the source. You better find out who really has power. Who is the king of this earth? Because everything here perishes. And not buy into the lie. Don't buy into his lie. Please, I'm begging people, please do not buy into the lie. The biggest lie of them all. We are not gods. At all. At all. We are not gods. That's what I mean. Even the, 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 the little bit of ability that we have here, man, we, we're fooled. He's gotten us to believe that we're really, we really think we're gods. We really think that the way we think matters. We really think that the way, what we say, and how we feel, and how we see things matters. You have no say-so at all. At all. And you have no power. So you better, you better find the source. That's my best advice. Find, get to the source. All that matters in his life is getting to the source. I used to be one too, like, you know, the aspirations. Everybody wants to, at least when you're here, you think to yourself, I mean, what's wrong with wanting to either either live a decent life or live a better life? And, and the means that you use to get there, whether it be good or bad, everybody is up to their own, you know, their own judgment. Leave everybody up to their own judgment. You know, pursue what you want to pursue. I don't even really know what the point of pursuit is at this moment at all, unless it's for his purpose, unless it's for me. To have an understanding of where I'm going. Because this pass through is so temporary. The timing is so short. And matter of fact, it's not even about the timing. The fact that I know that every man is going to die. And the, 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 the chance and the risk that I can end up there. If anybody goes there, anybody that is there would wish that they had a second chance. Because they probably would be radical. They wouldn't even live this life even caring about what they eat. Or how much hours they're getting of sleeping. Or whether or not their kids are rebellious. Or whether or not their mom loves them. Or whether or not their dad loves them. Or whether or not uh, the, 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 all the frivolous things that we care about. I don't even know if that... I, I don't feel like I want to care about any of those things. Even though I still have love for those things. And the people and my family. And I, 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 there's no way that I will allow those things anymore to have any priority to my eternal destination. That's the key. You want to talk about winning... We love talking about winning. Winning is making it eternally to your destination. That's how you win. Find your eternal destination. 